This is not my country, but it's a part of my story. I came to Wyala seven years ago, and a year ago, I left as an artist, a landscape artist. And it's this land that found that in me, and it's to that land I will always return and pay thanks through my art, my drawing and my painting. But when I returned the last time to create new work, I found that one of the most beautiful places in Australia was going to be turned into an industrial wasteland down the road from Wyala at Point Lowly. Special, significant, ancient, but unprotected. What could I do? I could write a letter. I could get angry. I could also make a film. With the help of a few young people from Wyala, we have made a documentary. We'd never made one before, but that didn't stop us. So here it is, our story, our backyard. And we ask, have you been to Lowly, Mr Ran? travel most of Australia's coastline and without a doubt Point Lowly in the surrounding area is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. When I lived in Wyala this was the place I came to to get away from the industry. Wyala is an industrial town and Point Lowly in the surrounding area is its recreational backyard. In the 1980s uh, it's unfortunate that they decided to build a gas fractionation plant at Port Benython. That's on the Point Lowly Peninsula. And many feel it's a mistake we shouldn't add to. However, the state government's proposing to develop that peninsula even further, over 500 hectares with industrial development. And that includes a fuel terminal and refinery, a massive export jetty, uh, a bulk commodity storage facility and so forth. They had a one day community forum where people were told what was going to happen. No one's been consulted. I'm um, Gugada Bidindara Bangla woman. My grandmother mm. was born in the Bangla country. Now she's given me this story From the age of about eight years old, I could remember my grandmother telling me the story right up until she passed away. And um, so I've, I've got that. And when I first came from Point Pierce to here, it was like opening up a book. When I saw the countryside, I could see the story. The storyline just flowed. It seemed to be like each bend we turned and that there was hills and everything to signify. But all along here, years and years ago, my grandmother said that they walked. And the story, they followed the story right through, all along the beach, right through to up to here, and then right around, right around the bend here to Fitzgerald Bay. Now the story is the seven sisters dreaming, seven sisters and the moon, Vera the moon. The moon is a male and the seven sisters are the seven sisters of the star system Pallades. Rose Hulman is a local custodian for the seven sisters dreaming story that runs all the way around the coastline and through the Stony Point, Black Point, Point Lowly area where the proposed export jetty is to be built. This area is significant to the Bangla people. At least 13 archaeological sites have been identified in this location. And it's also here that the unusual ritual of singing to the sharks took place. There's uh, at least 13 uh, campsites and uh, ritual sites uh, at Viruna Bay, uh, Black Point and Stony Point. That's the area which, uh, well, Viruna Bay is already fenced off by the Santos, but the rest, you know, is, is now uh, extending in, in, into that new industrial development zone. So basically, uh, these people um, will probably employ someone, but as usual, um, it probably will be absorbed and, and uh, maybe fenced off. Paul Mazurik is the director of the Wyala Maritime Museum and has done extensive research into the history of the Point Lowly area, 
Recently, he curated an exhibition titled Singing to the Sharks that explores the ecological and mythical significance of Point Lowly and the surrounding region. Well, basically, it was called a place of the sharks and, and eventually um, uh, a ritual singing to the sharks as according to the elders from the late 1960s who represented Bangala. But also, um, they were already people, you know, who, who actually intermarried. So, so uh, for example, this particular elder uh, was part Bangala and part other, other tribes. So, so, so she had both knowledge. Well, apparently, when, when they sang to the sharks, um, the men were uh, on the be uh, the men were on the heads, and, and the, the women on the beach, um, stomping the ground. Um, obviously, um, as you know, they they don't they never use the cherry or anything, so only clapsticks in this area. So so it was all very rhythmic, um, and and the, the human voices. Um, so um, and they created um, this harmony, um, and it continued for some time. That, that's all what I know, you know, what, what has been researched so far. My name's Glenn Newchurch, I'm born and bred in Wyla. I'm, uh, I'm the custodian of the man's business out here in Fitzgerald's Bay, for, for the, uh, which co coincides with the uh, Seven Sisters Dreaming. And um, yeah, my main concerns is uh, that with the development that's going to happen up in Point Lowly and because um, they haven't been consulted yet and my main my main thing is uh, what's going to happen if with the significance of the Aboriginal people's tribal grounds and and things that we've got out here now and not just here up in Point Lowly and um, are we going to be consulted and have they taken that into consideration what our views are and everything and uh, it's a big big issue at the moment because there's uh, all the all the attention that's going to go to Point Lolly development the industrial area they need to take into consideration our point of view because of uh what's about to happen that we won't be able to see this place won't be able to come here anymore and this is where our people came and they felt good about this calling in the sharks and the dolphins all the big fish the kukumudi <laughs>